All right, everybody, thank you so much to David Wood for being on our show today. David played for the Spurs, the Bulls. Uh, he, he played eight different pro teams. He's a very strong man of God. He uh, went to D.C. to play for our, to pray for our country in 2020. Uh, he still prays for our country. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video today um, and hope that somehow you can be inspired to continue to stand strong for Jesus Christ. And uh, again, a big thank you to David Wood. Praise the Lord. That's right. The walls are coming down. So I got a prophetic word from a former Mr. Universe named Dennis Tenorino. Uh, he, he walked in the office of a prophet and he said 30, like 30 years ago, he says, I see you as a prophetic man with a horn in your hand leading men to the end time revival. So I yeah. went out and bought my first shofar the next day. And I've been uh, worshiping God with the horn ever since. So. I love it. You know, that's that's interesting that um, if you had said uh, I, there's going to be a revival before Christ's return, you know, with the last administration and not to get too deep into politics, but um, I, I would have said, no, that's not going to happen. But now that we've seen this change and I've seen an outpouring of people looking for the truth in the word of God looking for truth. They're tired of the media mixes. Uh, I'm going to agree with you. I, I think right now you're seeing a resurgence in faith, the search for God, the search for truth. So I believe a revival is happening. I agree with you. We're, we're waiting and hoping. And, and I, um, you know, I felt led to go to Washington, D.C. and march around the Supreme Court building and march around the Capitol. And I, I actually went four times and people who you know, knew me, thought I was crazy, but people who have a close relationship with the Holy Spirit were cheering me on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I took a lot of heat for, I wasn't there. I was, I was there January 6th, actually. I was at the Capitol. I didn't yeah. go in, but I was interceding for America. I wanted free and fair elections. I wanted to see God's kingdom come and I didn't want people to steal the vote. And uh, I was there with, I believe, 2 million other people. And 99.999% wow. of the people were good patriots. And the, uh, as you know, in cyber warfare and in the battle for the public view, they, they everyone there looked like a, a fool. But the fact was they were actually there to see America um, flourish and, and want fair and free elections. Sure. I followed you almost every day you did that. And I agree, you were crazy, but <laughs> crazy for Jesus, man. And, and you need to have that. I mean, Christ was a radical. Let's be honest. He went against the status quo. And for you to stand up for your faith, we should be applauding that. That shouldn't be a, a, a negative thing. Well, thank you, brother. It, uh, I took a lot of heat for it. But, um, you know, if, if I could talk about January 6th, so I... I you know, people started lining up at, at mm -hmm. 3 a.m. And I got there about 6 a.m. And uh, I did make it into the meeting. And it's it uh, people were happy and getting along. They started it out with some worship music, you know, the, the Trump meeting. And Paula White came up and opened it up in prayer. And it kind of turned to like a country music festival type celebration. And then Trump came out like 50 minutes late. Mm -hmm. And there were so many people there, you couldn't get a a car you can go from where he spoke to the capitol oh, wow. and and he started he's supposed to speak at 11 he spoke about 11 45 and they stormed the capitol at 12 20 and he he talked the first 30 minutes was great it was cold i had industrial gloves and seven layers on and so there was a lot of showmanship yeah uh, january 6th but um i'm actually happy the way things worked out because Having this break between administrations, to me, revealed a lot about what's going on. Where had Trump got two simultaneous terms, this might not have come out. And so I think now that that's happened and he has experience and we have a people that are in the know and have seen what's going on, with the second term, <clears throat> he might be able to make a greater difference. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. You know, I right. it is it is a plan that's orchestrated from heaven, and the last four years have woken up. You know, most people. I mean, I I believe you know there's seven mountains of influence um, in our world, and the, a lot of the church has just been stuck in the four walls and just kind of let let the world go to hell. And mm-hmm. now God's raising up you and me and other people to try to influence the, the mountain of government, the mountain of education, the mountain of arts and entertainment. Mm-hmm. And, um, <laughs> and then we've seen a lot of corruption in the church. Oh yeah. That, uh, God, God's judgment begins in the house of God and God's cleaning it up. It's a rescue operation from heaven, but God needs you and me and all your, all the people watching this to just tune into the Holy spirit and say, Lord, Thy kingdom come yeah. in my life and help me to to make a difference wherever I go and and may your kingdom come and your will be done. As an athlete, you're you're in a spotlight. You're going to take huge hits for your faith, and and that's that's okay. Um, <laughs> that's okay. I I really really love Jesus and I've been forgiven for a lot and He still loves me. Um, I went through some personal challenges you know a few seasons of really hard times in my life and i kind of felt like i you know i've always been honest with money and everything but i just made some mistakes and i felt like basically a piece of crap and um god's been i've been asking god for the gift of prophecy and asking him to fill me with the holy spirit and um that i could just be used in all the ways and that i actually had an open vision of uh, me in a pit because I would I would be praying about my family and my marriage in uh, 2017 and I would ask God to save me. I would I would lay on fl- prostrate on the floor, Lord, please save me, please save me. And my hand up, my right hand up, Lord, please save me with your righteous right hand, please save me. And God told me, stop asking me to save you. He said, instead, thank me, thank me for saving you. So. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So yeah, quit being a, a whiny baby and put on some faith yeah. and trust me and speak in faith and battle, you know, battle. I God understands that I was, I took body blows and I was hurting, but Jesus saved me. I, I had, I was afraid our, our market in Reno, Nevada, Nevada got crushed in 2008 and nine. It was the worst foreclosure market. So if you didn't have gray hair and you were an investor (laughs) and you were developing, you lost, you went down, you know, if you were, had gray hair and you didn't have debt, then you made it. But if you had debt, I mean, land went down 90%. And um, so I went through some financial problems, family problems, and I just felt like a piece of crap. And I had a vision of, of Jesus and uh, I was in a pit and he saved me. And I, I figured he just grabbed me like, like, you know, like my phone here. He grabbed me like, like I'm a little elf, you know, and I'm, a, I stink and I'm dirty. And he just grabbed me out of the pit and picked me up and put me on a solid rock, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I am. I am. A, I'm dirty and I'm, I'm not, I'm worthless, but Lord, you love me and you saved me. And I was just so happy. He pulled me out of the pit and put me on a solid rock. And I was so happy. That's, he was 16 and he grabbed me and he hugged me and he, he picked me up and he held me tight and he really loved me. And, um, and then he put me on that rock. So way different than sure. I thought. I mean, I'm a Luke 747 believer that he who's been given, been forgiven much loves much. And for us to realize that and that God cleans us up and not to go back. I think that was very good what you said, Dave. Literally saying that, don't ask me to forgive you again. The work, it's finished. John 19, 30, the work is finished. Let's move forward. And a lot of guys dwell in the past and can't move forward. Yeah, for sure. Forgetting those things that are behind and straining towards those things that are ahead. You're really not going to accomplish much in life if you are meditating on the past. You know, the, the great thing about God is he can forgive and forget. Uh, mm-hmm. As humans, we can't really do that. We can forgive, but we, we don't really forget. But God actually can. So yes. when you ask God to forgive you and then you bring it up, he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's right. Hey, you know, that- Epi-lanthanomai. 
is the ability for God to remove from his mind the sins that we've done. He leaves it in our mind so we don't do them again. But if you bring, like you said, if you bring it up to him, he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. And that's the, that's the word he used, epilanthanomai. Your identity was not in your wealth. Your identity was not, your identity is in Christ Jesus. It is. I actually saw a vision at another church where I was doing basketball camps in Chicago. Um, so I got up on the mic and I said, I saw a vision of me uh, doing basketball camps in the inner city. And I know I'm going to play in the NBA. And wow. the head, uh, Larry Karachuk was the head guy of the outreach. Reggie White was there and I believe Barry Sanders and um, a bunch of uh, guys. My college coach says of all the guys I ever coached, he goes, you, when I'm in the NBA, right? He's, he's scouting for the Golden State Warriors. I'm in the NBA. He comes up to me, he goes, of all the guys I ever coached, you're the least likely guy I yeah. thought would make it to the NBA. So if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires or he'll change your desires. Yeah. But um, God helped me. I grew late and I went from a mediocre uh, high school athlete as a sophomore, I was the low below average. And then, uh, you know, when I made it to the NBA, I was a, a really good athlete. Hudson Bay high school. Yep. Now go ahead, man. Start there and let's see how that, how you came up to where you're at or where you were. Uh, okay. Well, I, um, when I was six foot one, 124 pounds, when I was a sophomore in high school, last name is wood. So I got called stick man and toothpick and stuff like that. <laughs> bird legs that's not that funny brother but uh anyway <laughs> i told the seniors i'm 125 pounds oh wow and so they they took me and they said no way you're 125 so they took me um to the locker room put me on scale and with clothes on i was 124 pounds so <laughs> um, this guy a super positive guy came up to me and he goes david he goes you can play in the nba no one ever told me that. <laughs> he wow. goes, you you need to work like it depends on you and pray like it depends on God. And something miraculous happened. Rob, what do you think? What do you think the miracle happened when he did that? Do you think I grew seven inches or do you think that I believed that it was possible? I would say when somebody states that they see something in you that you don't recognize, it gives you the belief to believe in yourself. I so yeah. as we tune in the Holy Spirit, that guy spoke life into me and I believed it was possible. And then I, he said, you need to do this. Work like it depends on you and pray like it depends on God. Amen. So that's what I did. Yeah. I was a super hard worker, worked long and hard, pretty disciplined. And yeah. um, God blessed my work. The Bible says the diligent will rule. And I, I, God gave me wisdom. I humbled myself. I, I got to mentor in basketball. The guy at the community center named Teddy Davis. I humbled myself, said, please teach me the game. I'll sweep the floors. I'll, I'll stack the chairs. I'll help the senior citizens. Just teach me how to play this game. And right. he worked with me from nine years old to 32. I don't know. I mean, Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. But I think it kind of correlates to other things. If you're hungry and thirsty, you can do amazing things. God made you amazing. No, I agree with you. A uh, Ray Sidnor said the same thing. He said it was a coach that came to him and said, you're going to play for me because you've got talent. He he didn't believe in himself either. He was It was a woman named Pat Carlton. And I remember this to this day. I'm troubled. I'm doing crazy things. She comes to me and she grabs my face. She's probably 80-something years old. She says, Rob, you're going to be a blessing. And I'm like, I've never forgotten that moment. Well, that's a prophetic word that she spoke over your life that was anointed by God. Mm -hmm. And it changed your life. Uh, Kevin Johnson, who was a great player, he told me that um, his grandmother uh, spoke over him that he was going to be great, that he was going to do great things. And most people have had somebody spur them on towards love and good deeds. That, that's one thing the Holy Spirit's been teaching me. Uh, it says, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. So when, when we meet somebody and we're talking to them, we should try to tune into Holy Spirit 
if we don't if we're not connected to the holy spirit we can bear no fruit that will last we just we just are kind of going through life nothing's changing for eternity but once we plug in the holy spirit if we can if we look at a person and we say holy spirit help me here and then we we tune into heaven we can speak life over people that will change eternity why don't we hear more about the christian athletes what an influence you guys have to inspire younger generations not only to be who they are uh in their talents but who they are in christ jesus you know, I I got to play with David Robinson, so he's not to talk about his personal business, but he was a great man. Yeah, he got saved and was on fire for God, and he's lived a great life from what I know. But he was um, he had a huge shoe contract. He went into the playoffs every year. He had a house in Aspen. He had a house in Hawaii. Had an amazing house in San Antonio. So you, you got no time for ministry then, you know. We have to be we have to be in a discipleship relationship. We should be being discipled, like I'm. My pastor is discipling me, and I'm praying every uh, day for people to be saved, and for about fifteen people that I try to disciple. So David Robinson did a great job. So he yeah. he did good, and he was he was a man of God. Good. But I'm just saying, you uh, heaven might want you to ran arenas and, and be a professional athlete and share the gospel. But you've got your shoe contract that you signed and then you've got, you make other obligations for fun mm -hmm. and, uh, and family. And then you, your time's up. You know what, to be honest, like the old lady who touched your face, yeah. you know what, that was more powerful than uh, what David Robbins could really say. <laughs> uh, to somebody or Steph Curry. I mean, that was, that was a God moment, you know, that sure was a was. God moment. You've remembered it. So any yeah. of us, any of us, if we tune into the power of the Holy spirit, we can speak a word of encouragement. The Bible says eagerly desire the gift of prophecy. So okay. I just encourage everyone listening to this, you know, you, you might say, I'm not a, a Reggie white or a Barry Sanders or a David Robinson um, or a Steph Curry, but I, I mentioned some old old stars from the past. Um, <laughs> That's right. They know who know, they are. Steph Curry, though, he's a man of God. And, yeah. Uh, God can use you, even in a more powerful way. So just if, if you let the power of God flow through you, through love and encouragement, you can, you can change the world with that I, little kid next door. And you just never know, Dave, who you're going to reach with, like you said, positive words in any situation – your neighbor, one one moment at a time. You should have five people that you mm. know that are in your sphere of influence. You should pray for every day that they get saved, and then I love you it. should <clears throat> try to be discipled by a bunch of different people. You know, and you should try to um, disciple. Yeah, you know, five five people. So five people that that five people that you know you kind of submit to, and five people that you are discipling, and five people that that you want to see get saved. And it's pretty strategic um, because Jesus said, whatever you ask the father for in my name, he'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. We've had, and he said it three times. Jesus did. So it's, yeah, you know, if he says it once, you better listen. If he says it twice. You better super listen. And if he says it three times. It's like, Hey bud, open your ears and apply this. You know, one, one thing that was fun for me in DC is I, uh, I got, I just went on. Uh, yeah. So it's powerful. You know, the blood, uh, spiritual weapon we have, you know, we have the word of God, the name of Jesus, and the life is in the blood. Jesus has shed his blood to purchase us for God. So there's real power in the blood. I um, I went 13 days without eating food and just drank mineral water and uh, just plugged into the Holy Spirit. I was peculiar for sure, like you you said, you said maybe crazy, but <laughs> peculiar. I said it was I, I, I was leading. Well, everyone would agree with you. And I love, but it. I was, I was walking in serious love, you know, I sure. mean, I was, when I eat food, I I'm kind of in the flesh, you know, to be honest. And, um, but when I'm fasting, I can, you know, when you're hungry for food, your sexual desires and everything else kind of, comes in line you just want to eat <laughs> <laughs> well, that's biblical, so, that's biblical yeah bro. yeah 
Fasting is powerful. Anyone listening and your your life isn't where you want it to be, I I just challenge you to to fast and pray and and seek God's face and go without food. And every time you're hungry, you just think about God. And I think it's Isaiah 58. Well, there it is. That people can read it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I love what you're doing. I, I We went from Hudson Bay High. You went to Skagit Valley. Is it university or community college? Skagit Valley Junior College. Um, All right. Interesting. I uh, was up there and we won the championship for Washington, Oregon. And I became really good friends with the Caviezel family. And uh, now, they had five kids. Well, Jim Caviezel is the actor who played uh, Jesus and the Passion oh, of the okay. Christ. So okay. Jim Caviezel is pretty famous. He's really become a, a powerful voice for yes. children and He's even even better looking than me, if you can believe that. Uh, that's so. impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so you met him in at Skagit University? Yeah, in his family, and but I went to junior college there. Um, didn't really wasn't really recruited that much until my sophomore year, and then I I um, God helped me keep growing. I grew another inch. Yeah, and um, got recruited to go to Nevada Reno, and was kind of kind of redshirt. My junior year there, and but I ended up starting um, for two years at Nevada, and was a pretty good three point shooter, pretty tough. You uh, were rebounder. I went through all your stats yeah. over your sixteen year career, fourteen year career, man. You you are a three point shooter <laughs> and a free throw shooter. Well, thanks. Yeah, yeah, good free throw. So I I actually didn't know that there was a Reno. I I always thought you went to UNLV when when we met. That's when I sent you that text. Um, I always thought you went to UNLV. I didn't know. Well, that. I, I did too. When they first recruited me, they said, uh, this is coach Sonny Allen from the university of Nevada, uh, Reno. And then I hung up, I go, am I being recruited by the great powerhouse UNLV? <laughs> and I, I had to look on the internet. Oh no, it's Nevada, Reno. What's that? <laughs> so I went there and, um, played pretty good. Didn't get drafted. There was like seven rounds of the draft didn't get drafted, but I got drafted in the CBA, the minor leagues, which is kind of like the G League. Yep. And I, I almost got cut from the G League, but um, by the grace of God, I uh, I made it. And actually, you know, I went to church there and this prophetic lady named Evelyn Gibson prayed for me. And she laid hands on me and said, son, the Lord says that, that I'm with you. And just like Moses had a staff in his hand, he goes, I'm giving you a basketball and I'm going to use you. Yeah to share my love with this basketball and son, when you need it, it'll be there. Wow. When you need it, it will be there. I almost got cut, but when I needed it, I just played well enough to, to squeak by. And what happened was a guy came down from the bulls named Elston Turner. He's a, he's a coach with the Minnesota Timberwolves now, but he was a great pro and he came down to the minor leagues. He actually taught me a lot about basketball and uh, we won like 13 games in a row. So then I became a, a bona fide minor league player and my career kind of took off from there. Yeah. It's called the D league, D, D league. league. And, okay. and then the, I probably Gatorade paid them $10 million or, you know, $2 yeah. million a year. And they said, Hey, why don't you change it from uh D to G and you'll get 2 million bucks. And they're like, Hey, that sounds good. And <laughs> uh, so they took that money and changed it to the, the G league. But my son, I have a son, my third son, Moses Wood, he plays, he was in camp with the Phoenix Suns, and he's in the G League with the Valley Suns in the G League. So that's pretty fun. I, I get to watch him, and he's um, he actually made four hundred thousand in college last year. Yeah. Oh, the NIL and, and, and NIL money, and then Damn. my first contract with the Bulls was a hundred and ten, and he's making more than that. He's making more than that in the minor leagues now. So oh, good for him. So Mo Birdie, they got, they call him right. That's his uh, Twitter handle. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> I saw yeah. it. Yeah. And Moses. And Moses, is he the one that was born in Italy or when you were playing? In he the... was born in Limoges, France. Yep. That's his middle name is Limoges. I was, I, um, um, I was playing there and uh, Andrew Wiggins, his dad, uh, they needed a bigger guy. So I went to, to France and replace Andrew Wiggins' dad. Oh, and, wow. uh Mitch Wiggins is his name. 
Okay. And then they had the son who was first round first round pick in the draft and plays with the Golden State Warriors now. Okay. So wow. Mitch Wiggins married the tallest, fastest uh, sprinter at uh, his college. So then they had the genetics to uh, <laughs> make a first round, first pick baby. So he's. How about that? Congratulations to them. <laughs> well, you haven't done bad. You got four sons. Three of them I know at least play basketball, I think. Now, all of them played college. Okay. And then I got yeah. one who's okay. who's playing in Spain, uh, oh, just okay. in a mi minor league in Spain. And then uh, Moses is – he's a great three-point shooter and super quick and 6'8", so he's got a good chance oh. to make the NBA. One played at Alaska Anchorage, and then my baby's um, – he's got a little – he had a knee injury. It's gotten better, so he's looking to – He's taking a red shirt year this year and hopes to play some more next year. Is that He's a six four? Yeah. Okay. Six four guard, world class shooter. Did he play oh. at Washington or Penn? Um Washington. Caleb played at Penn and okay. Moses played at UW. And then okay. Isaac. Isaac is playing um he played at Butte College in California, junior college. So. Okay. He's still got a couple years of eligibility, but you know, life's not easy as you know, brother. And if you want to do anything, um, you're going to get knocked down and you're going to feel like quitting, but, yeah. uh, Joshua chapter one, you know, the Lord said through jo told Joshua, be strong, and courageous, be strong, and courageous. Have I not commanded you be strong, and courageous. So if you, we want to walk with God, we, we have to put on our big boy boots and, and, uh, it's going to get tough sometimes, yeah. but if you trust in God and, and just don't quit and well, walk in humility and love, you're going to make it. But we got to believe that. Yeah. Well, he was scared to death. You know, I mean, God told him three times in one chapter to be strong and courageous. So yeah, the reason he only told him that because he's, there was going to be times when he was not going to be strong and not going to be courageous, but he just had to, uh, suck it up and do it and um you know when you need it it'll be there you know yeah. god is the god of he's the ever-present help in time of need and yeah. um you know the bible talked about demon possessed people and um i've seen some and yep. ministered to them and seen the devil come out of people i went on a mission trip to jamaica and actually ran into a guy who was demon possessed i was the first one and he was calling us spies, and he had a big belt. He's six five, muscular guy, yeah. and uh, he had a belt. And he told us we were spies. And my flesh was scared, but in my spirit, the the Lord came, and I just felt this power, um, not to hurt him. I love. I mean, I was there because I love the people of Jamaica, but it was pretty cool because I felt the power of Almighty God rise up in me. Mm -hmm. that he was with me and even in dc there was a lot of times where i got i would carry my uh, an appeal to heaven flag and the u.s flag and i had jesus on my shirt so i went to black lives matter and i was worshiping god with my horn there and yeah people threatened to kill me and stab me and told me to leave and called me all kinds of names and sure. i said bro the Lord sent me here, so you can't hurt me. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I went to Black Lives Matter every day to pray. Yeah. And when I first went there, I was a big white guy with the American flag. Mm -hmm. And they didn't appreciate that, some of them. But um, yeah. I kept showing up and I became friends with the people that wanted to kill me the first time they saw me. Absolutely. So if we, if we walk in love and we're authentic and we... When, our, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. So God mm -hmm. can change anything around. But we got to walk in humility and love and yes. let the Holy Spirit flow out of us. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, I have, a, I have a, a very powerful, at least to me, it was a powerful story about Donald Trump. And I'm coaching my son's uh, basketball team, like just had a basketball practice. And I and, and the, whole, the Holy Spirit really convicts me about um, if I do something sexually or that's not right or i think something wrong or look at something he really convicts me of that so i said to these guys i said and donald trump you know sometimes he's a butt i think i <laughs> use the a word but 
Yeah, I agree with but you. But I, I, I said that, <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, like I'm talking to 10 kids on the basketball yeah. court, and the Holy Spirit totally convicted me. Okay. Like, totally convicted me. Sure. And so I actually, I had to talk to God. I go, why are you defending him? I didn't hear an audible voice in me, but the Lord spoke to my heart and said, he's my son. He's my child. Mm. And 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 I, I've chosen him. To do, to do a good work. And so I had to go back to those kids and say, hey, I just um, want to apologize for talking bad about President Trump. I shouldn't have said that. And uh, so then I, I had a supernatural manifestation from God the Father through the Holy Spirit that that's his boy and he's <laughs> chosen him. God has anointed him to do a work. Not that he's perfect. Not that he's, um, you know, he was the 45th president and uh, Isaiah 47 talks about Cyrus and how he, God used this guy Cyrus to help the Jewish people, God's people, get free. And um, God has chosen Donald Trump as a vessel to bring freedom to people, freedom from financial bondage and God's kingdom to come on earth through saving of babies and through prayer in schools and to share your faith. You know, you, you couldn't talk, a coach couldn't talk about God um, when I was in school and now the Supreme Court ruled that, you know, you can share your faith as a coach. So God is, is turning things around. You know, the separation of church and state was, wasn't meant to, to make it so people can't share their heart on, on God. Mm -hmm. It was, it was to keep people, I think, from pushing their religious views on others, but to share your heart free country you should be able to share your heart absolutely and and the devil doesn't he hates god's word he hates our testimony and i i've actually come to revelation how powerful your testimony is you know i thought we had power in the in the name of jesus the blood of jesus and the word of god and through worship but you know the bible says they in revelations 12 11 they overcame satan by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony so your story, your story, whatever it is, the Holy Spirit will flow through you and it, it's powerful. So share your story, you know, ask God for wisdom, work on it to prepare it, you know, establish common ground with people and then do a transition sentence to your story and right. how Jesus has touched you. And nobody can argue with that. Well, I like your transparency too. And you share your story. You know, a lot of guys are afraid to say, I have a weakness or I fell. And I think that inspires other men to do the same and to realize I am imperfect. Donald Trump is imperfect. I wish he'd be more presidential when he talks sometimes. He's he's, he's definitely changed a lot. He's he's, he's done he's way better than he used to be. <laughs> um, when he had that debate with Joe Biden, and I guess we could say President Biden was yeah. really struggling, I, I thought he was going to make fun of him, but he did not. He, he, he kind of like the Mike Tyson fight the other day. I'm so glad that. Tyson to get knocked out, you know, it's good to have mercy in life at times. Yeah. Well, I, I play in uh senior leagues, so I'll just tell you. Yeah, go ahead. Tyson, I, I actually watched the first two rounds last night and um because it was lagging so bad on yes. Netflix that I couldn't even see it yes. when I watched it live. Um, but Tyson looked good in the first round and looked uh, okay to good in the second round. And yeah. then he ran out of gas, man. Uh, but I don't think he needed seven rounds. He only needed the first two. Because <laughs> when he did hit Jake Paul, he knocked him back about six feet. I disagree with you. He, um, <laughs> I watched it second time. Watch it again. Yeah. he Jake Paul's not dumb. So No, no. He, he's the promoter. I mean, basically the American people just paid for him to fulfill the dream of fighting mike tyson let's let's be honest yeah, I, I thought it was a great great show the only thing that wasn't great yes. was tyson after two rounds he was done but he didn't he, need more he could have finished him in the first two if he wanted to i disagree watch it again <laughs> think about tyson it it was a really hard pill for him to like i don't have it anymore i can't i want to knock him out and i'm my knee hurts so bad and i'm so slow that I can't do anything. And so then he just started to <laughs> chew, chew on that glove. Maybe, well, he couldn't find an ear. Maybe he was hungry. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
I don't, you know, I don't think anyone feels sorry for him when you make $20 million. And yeah. I, I have a lot of respect for Mike Tyson. It's been prophesied he's really going to um, come into relationship with Jesus. And, and uh, you know, everybody respects him as a, as a tough fighter. I think he already has. Don't you, do you think, uh, I, from my understanding, he's committed his life to Christ. He's still a baby Christian, but I think that's where he's at in my understanding. Yeah. I think he's got a pretty good heart now, as long as he's yeah. not angry. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make him mad. <laughs> so, Rob, let me ask you a question. What, like people who are sensing the Holy Spirit, um, mm -hmm. wanting to use them, you know, uh, what, what are the steps they need to take to be used of the Holy Spirit? I really believe that anywhere a man of God goes, and I always say that even if you, David Wood, walk into the office of the president of the United States, if you are the man of God in that room, you have authority in that room if you're speaking from God. So I think it's just a matter of people saying, again, like you, I don't have a, an NBA career, I don't have an NFL career, but I have a story. And it's just knowing and owning your story, victories and defeats, and going out and tell people what Jesus Christ did for you. I'm looking up a Bible verse here. Um, Hebrews 10, 24. Hebrews 10, 24 says, Let us consider how we may spur one another, one another on towards love and good deeds. So I, I challenge if you're listening to this, um, just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Jesus said you can bear no fruit unless you're connected to the Holy Spirit. So say, Holy Spirit, fill me. And then as you go out in the day, when you look at someone, consider them, tune into the Holy Spirit and spur them on towards love and good deeds. And you'll see the, the spirit of God from your belly will flow rivers of living water. And you can, you can match the 80 year old lady who put her hands on your face and right. told you you were special. That was a, a rhema word from, from heaven. Sure. And, and we can tune into heaven and, and change lives by the words of encouragement God gives us. God can give us a love for people and it's not natural it's supernatural so we have to tune in to god's love because otherwise we would just you know like we do sometimes anyway we'd be concerned about ourselves and me myself and i and what can i do for my temporary pleasure when jesus was our example of yeah. dying to himself picking up his cross and doing what the father wanted him to do well, James chapter four, you pray to pour the blessings on you. You pray out of your selfish ambition. You fight because of your selfish ambition. We should be outward focused. Amen. Yeah, I agree. Well, let's get back to your basketball a little bit. I'm I um, finished my senior year at Nevada, and then I got drafted in the CBA, the minor leagues, and went to Rockford, Illinois, okay. and almost got cut there. A couple guys, one guy who was... Bruce Dalrymple, who was with Mark Price in college, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. He was in camp. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, John Schweitz, a guy who played with the Lakers, they were in camp. And the coach, uh, I was an unknown guy from the big sky, and the coach kept me and cut these big-name guys. And, wow. and uh, God exalted me right when I needed it mm -hmm. and um, solidified myself in the CBA. The next year, I... Paid my own way to the L.A. Summer League. You see, now it's called the Las Vegas Summer League. Okay. Paid my own way. Paid money to be in a free agent division. Dominated that and got picked up by the Bulls and the Pistons and even the Lakers. And then I got invited to camp with the Bulls. And they back then they brought in like eight guys for one job. And there was only one spot that wasn't guaranteed. And I fought for that and made the team for uh, about – Four weeks in the preseason, I scored 10 points in the last preseason game. And Scotty Pippen, he was in his second year in the league. And he said, hey, Wood, how many minutes are you going to play tonight, first regular season game? I go, I don't know, 15 minutes. You know, I just scored 10 points in the preseason. He just goes, oh. <laughs> he thought, thought that was so funny. And uh, I didn't play that game, and I didn't play the next game. And Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the third game, we're up by like 35 points. And so I got in for the last 37 seconds. 37 seconds goes and I didn't touch the ball, you know. <laughs> got, And so then I'm like, man, I didn't even touch the ball. Yeah. And so then 
I sat the bench the next game, and the next game I got um, I got in um, for like 25 seconds. I go, man, I, I played in the NBA now, but I got to touch the ball, you know. So I'm Absolutely. like running around, just throw me the ball, you know, begging for the ball. And the clock runs out, I, and the game was over. And I played two games with the Bulls, didn't even touch the ball. Sat the bench the next game. The next game, we're, we're, we're winning by 30 points, and I – Say to Phil Jackson, is is Doug Collins going to put me in? You know, yeah. And and so they ask Doug, "Are you going to put Wood in the game?" And he turns around and goes, "Why? So you go out there and fake an injury?" <laughs> so the so head coach was an assistant then, right? Doug yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then he became the head coach the next year. So just to tell you, like what I was good at is I yeah. didn't really totally understand it, but. Uh, God gave me a ability to judge speed and yeah. I would, if they were faster than me, I'd give them more space and if they were slower than me. I'd get up on them tight, but yeah, that that's something a lot of people don't, can't do. They're not good at, at judging their speed and the other person's speed. And then I, I was smart enough to know what your strengths are. Mm-hmm. So I was like a glue guy, you know, I, I, I would get the ball to the right guy at the right time. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't care about my own stats. I just wanted to win. Yeah. And then they said I was really tough. So I would, I would give up my body and pretty much be willing to die out there to win the game. So Anthony Bonner, and I know, you know, Anthony real well. Um, he, actually- yeah, we've almost, we've almost gotten to fight like five times every time we played, played against each other. We would pretty much almost fight. So we were both the same breed. You know? Yes, you were. And I talked to him and he said that about you. He hit, you know, cause you were so aggressive on defense. It drove him crazy, man. Dave, we got to watch out for Dave. You're going to get an elbow. You're going to get a rip. You're going to get a head, but I'll tell you a story. Uh, so there's a guy named Anthony Bonner. Um, not Anthony Bonner, Anthony Mason. He played with the Knicks and he okay. was probably the biggest muscles in the NBA. Okay. Um, and I saw him at the retired players association. And he said to me, David F and Wood, the first guy to ever give me a concussion. And so him and I didn't even know that we weren't, that we weren't cool, but I know for sure that Carl Malone and I, he want, he hated me, you know, mm-hmm. Carl Malone, I would bang him and bump him and yep. play as hard as I could on him. And he would tell me, to, and I was a little bit of a flopper too. So I was like, <laughs> hit him hard and then wait for them to hit me back. And then I would go, oh, oh, that's a good, good flopper. I figured of all the guys that hate me, uh, Carl Malone was probably number one. Uh, last time we talked, he said, quit flopping. You don't play the right way. Quit that. Blankety blankety blank. And so yeah. last All Star, I went to Salt Lake City and Carmel came up to me. And I was thinking of Anthony Mason, you know, telling me what he told me. Yeah. Using the F word, referring to me. <laughs> Carl Malone came up to me and gave me a hug and said, Hey, David, welcome to Salt Lake City. <laughs> I was almost passed out, you know. Yeah. And I, I told him the next day, I go, Carl, that was, I mean, I, you know, we had some battles and, uh, I just, that was really nice of you, man, to give me a hug and walk me <laughs> to Salt Lake. Total yeah. in shock, total shock, you know. I bet. Then he said, hey, man, we're a small brotherhood, you know, of, of yeah. players. We got we got to get along. So that, that that was one of the most amazing things <laughs> that's ever happened to me. So got a picture with Carl Malone. <laughs> and uh, He's my buddy now. So good, good. I know every guy that I've met that played against you always said exactly what you just admitted. They said, Man, he will hit you, he will knock you down. He is tough to play against. And it really did make some guys mad. <laughs> yeah. I I this isn't really a gift, but I do have the ability to antagonize and irritate. Yeah. I, I can be really irritating too. They, you know, my nickname in Spain was the Gladiator. Oh, that's so. awesome. If you Google David Wood, I played for Football Club Barcelona. We won the Spanish championship. Yeah. And uh, a gladiador, a gladiador. <laughs> I played in the Philippines as well. So, yeah. Uh, I was a high paid missionary to the sports world. And, uh, hey, man. It, it was pretty cool the way God allowed me to go 
whatever your passion is, you know, whatever you like, um, whatever's in your hand, you know, Moses had the rod in his hand. You might be a podcaster. Yeah. Um, you might be a singer, uh, just saying people, can I pray for you? You know, right. that's a powerful thing. Pray and, right there, right then. Yeah. Yes. Like 90, I'd say 49 out of 50 people. If you say it in a humble way, can I pray for you about anything? They're going to let you do it. Yeah. So it's supposed to be dream team four and there was the NBA lockout. So they got guys from Europe and okay, uh, I was in Europe and, so I got to play Rudy Tomjanovich was the coach and Del Harris, the Laker coach. Okay. And we, um, we, we made it to the final four and we had, we were, had Yugoslavia by 10 points with four minutes to go. And, and we ended up squandering that lead and, and yeah. we lost, but then we went to the bronze medal game and destroyed Greece by 30 and got the bronze medal. So that was pretty cool. That's quite a victory. <laughs> yeah. So over there, how did you find it difficult, Dave, to 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 talk about Christ in Europe? Yeah, I am. Um, you know, the Bible says signs and wonders will accompany the the preaching of the word, and so I I will like put a lot of signs on my sh- sh- clothing. So I would wear John three sixteen. I like even this, you know, of having Jesus and a cross on. I love that shirt. Um, a sign and a wonder and just try to look for, you know, getting the, the conversation to God in a, in a strategic way and ask the Holy spirit for wisdom. And, yeah. And you can share your faith. You know, I, I want to tell you a story about my, my horn here. Can I that's do it. that? So I got this horn in Zimbabwe on a missions trip. See that that's like a, a drill hole in this horn. Right. And then it's got this, yeah. this end. So I went to Cuba with the horn just like this, and I I um, was praising God with it. I worship God with it. In Cuba, there's hurricanes, right? So yeah, there's metal and there's tile and there's so the vibrations of the horn really go well there. So I worship God in the house the house church where I was, and I blessed the pastor's wife. So she told me to go get my horn and and worship worship God with the horn in yeah. church. So I gave a testimony and um when I was with Athletes in Action we were playing Maryland and I I went out and I blew this horn before the game and I felt almighty God's pleasure. I felt the pleasure of God as I worshiped him with the horn. Yeah. And um so in Cuba, I told that story how I felt, you know, like Cherry Sapphire, he says, I feel God's pleasure when I run. I feel God's pleasure when I worship him with this horn. Right. I'm not very good at it, you know. So I got in front of the whole church and I worship God with my horn. This this horn doesn't have a really good mouthpiece, not like a trumpet, you know, where so it's, it, it can be pretty bad sometimes. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> so I worship in front of the whole church. I get up there and I blow my horn. Uh, three times, beautiful tone, and then I just tore. I just did bad, and I just, I did bad. You know, it was yeah. it wasn't a beautiful sound, and I just felt this pressure, and it, and literally Satan just kind of came on me and said, "You suck at that horn." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, it's like yeah, I do. I'm bad," and I I got kind of like a little panic attack. I mean, I started to sweat out my shirt. Yeah, and and I. I was like, I suck. And um, <clears throat> I felt terrible, man. Like, I, I'm never going to do this again. I'm a big guy. You know, when you're a big guy and you kind of suck at blowing the horn and you're in the front of the church on the front row yeah. and you just did a crap job in your opinion, um, I started sweating out my shirt. I mean, anyway, I, I just was sweating out my shirt. And um, so this horn, you know, has got the hole there and the, the hole here. Yep. And um, so then Satan was killing me, right? Clobbering me. And then Jesus came and uh, Jesus said, hey, hey, he said, David, I, I love it when you worship me with the horn. That's what he said. Love it. And Make I it just I moment. just started to cry. Yeah. You know, he didn't say, David, you're good at blowing the horn. I like it. He didn't yeah. say that. He didn't yeah. say I was good at it. 
He just said, David, I love it when you worship me with the horn. Yeah. And so I started to cry. And then for some reason, I reached down and uh, I put my hand over this hole. And and wind, wind was violently blown out of that hole. You know? mm -hmm. And so then I put my hand on both ends and wind was violently blown both ways out of the horn. Love it. And, and you know, I was a little tra traumatized, but I was in, you know, good mental health, you know, and, and the wind was violently coming out of both ends of my horn. And it's just a sign of one. Hey, David, you know, I love you. Yeah. And I love it when you worship me with your horn. And, yeah. and you know, he didn't say this, but I'll read. Like, you're not really good at it, but you, you just try hard. You know, you're just giving an effort. You're giving a perfect effort. And I'm pleased with you, you know. That's it. I love it when you worship me. And that's all God calls us to do is try to plug into him and worship him. I collapsed in the pulpit one Sunday. I'm looking around. I don't usually look at the audience. I just preach. But I started to see people. They're talking. They're not paying attention. Nobody's nobody's listening to a word I say. And that hit me. So, And the devil just, bam. And I collapsed in the pulpit. But I think it was just kind of God saying, it's not you, it's me. It was horrible. And it was embarrassing. But... It was yeah. like Mike Tyson in that fight. <laughs> <laughs> you got to let go of Mike Tyson. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. So people listen, hey, swing the bat, you know. Just ask God, Lord, fill me with your power. Fill me with your love. I love to do this. I love to do that. God, use that. Let me do that. Let me serve you however you want. And and just get out there and, and do it. And, you know, you might, you'll get better. You know, you'll get yeah. better. I'm, be I'm better at blowing the horn than I used to be. Yeah. Still not great. All right. I'll, I'll tell you something you might like. You know, I, I gave my, I have two horns right here. Yeah. I gave my, my horns to God. You know why I did that, Rob? Because I didn't want to toot my own horn. <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Has that made such an impression on me uh, four years ago? I wanted you to have those. I didn't know if you would bring them or not, but I'm like, Dave, please bring your horns. I love them. And it's just so unique, brother. It's you. It's your testimony. It's your gift. That's cool. I mean, so I had the prophetic word to, I see you as a prophetic man with a horn in your hand, leading men to the end time revival. I went out and got my horn. I worship, I blew horn, my horn and worship to God playing the University of Maryland with a Christian team called Athletes in Action. Mm -hmm. And I felt the pleasure of God. And then I had an experience in Cuba. Jesus said, I love it when you worship me with the horn. So do you think I care what someone else thinks? I mean, I'm not going to blow it loud in somebody's ear to irritate them. But yeah. when I'm outside, not in someone's ear, and I'm worshiping God with the horn and they don't like it, I don't, you know what, I'm if God's, I feel called to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it and worship to God. And it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks because I really know that God likes it, you know? Absolutely. I think it's important people hear your true story. And that is, that's powerful, Dave. Well, thank you. Yeah. It's, it's kind of cool the way God works, you know? Um, I, I don't feel special. You know, I, I know God thinks I'm special, but you know, I, I just feel like I'm just, one of the soldiers in God's army. And actually, you know, the first time I went to DC, I came back, landed in Reno, Nevada. I was walking down the tarmac and the Lord spoke to me, not audibly, but the Lord spoke to me. Guess what he said to me, Rob? He said, welcome home, soldier. Ah, uh, hey, look at welcome that. Welcome home, soldier. And <laughs> that that blessed my heart. Like, wow, I, I was out there doing, in the Lord's army, loving people, worshiping God, yeah. praying for God's kingdom to come. And God said, welcome home, soldier. So, I mean... <laughs> It really blessed me. <laughs> so I started thinking about it. But hey, sure. we're, we're God's, I'm his servant. You know, I don't care about accol right. accolades. The Lord, I want to be in God's army and walk in love and bless people and worship him with whatever way I can. Yeah, he gave you this body and you're using it for his glory. I mean, that's all we, that's all we can give back. It's all we have. And you're doing it obediently. Well, thank so you. I think it's amazing. Uh, are you now? Are you still selling real estate? Are you still doing that in Reno? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm a licensed real estate agent, and uh, I can't. I'm not qualified to give financial advice, but I I believe that um, 
there's opportunity and there's like 22,000 digital currencies, but I like XRP. I've been buying other assets. I believe in silver bullion is a really good investment. I'm not qualified to give financial advice, but XRP and silver bullion, those are my two <laughs> unqualified tips for your people. Well, I brought so, the realty up in case anybody's looking for a good real estate agent out there. Yeah, I'm a good negotiator. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a hard worker. So if you need some real estate, uh, you're very tall. You're very smart. <laughs> I, know, I know enough about you, Dave. You're very smart. You're a very humble guy, very intelligent. And you would be in great, and people would be in great hands if they looked you up and said, hey, help me uh, get settled in Thank Reno. You. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, brother. Absolutely. Um, so let me go down this list at the end. I'd like to kind of um, uh, ask a few pointed questions and then you yeah. give your opinion on. Uh, so my number one question is, who is Dave right now today? I'm a, I'm a servant of and follower of Jesus. And um, I'm asking God to help me to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word. I really want to apply it and do what it says. I want to walk in love and I want to follow Jesus's teachings. I had a real epiphany revelation of the parable of the wise and foolish builder, how you can hear God's word and think, well, that's great, but I want to build my life on the sand where it's easy to build and I can build fast and it's not hard. And um, you can build a nice house on the sand, but Jesus said, would the storms of life come and beat against your house? If you don't build on my teachings and my truth, Jesus said, when the storms come, your house is going to be destroyed. And spiritually, emotionally, family, business, financially, every way I challenge you, everyone listening to build your life on the teachings of Jesus, on the truth of Jesus's teachings. And then when the storms come, you can survive it. So when I, I haven't understood the teachings of Jesus, I've made some mistakes, like just financially. Um, I'm a dreamer. I'm a risk taker. And um, <clears throat> I thought the verse, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. I thought if you worked hard, you paid your tithes, and you um, didn't waste money, that God would supply all your needs. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of verses on debt in the Bible. You know, the borrower is servant to the lender, and mm -hmm. owed no man nothing but a you know, debt of love. But hey, if you want to make money in real estate, you buy low, you get debt, and then you write it up. And then you you sell high and pay off your debt. Well, if you don't time this, the market right, the cycle in the market, you buy high, you know, and you get debt, and then it goes down. You're you're going to go down. So, mm -hmm. um, I didn't understand debt and market cycles, and I took a beating in two thousand eight. Yeah, and got scars all over. Um, <laughs> so uh, people perish for lack of knowledge. That's right. Um, but yeah, seek God. Wisdom cries out. I, I, I don't think wisdom cries out very loud sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> to hear it, you got to be humble. You know, God, God yeah. talks loud to us on some things. Other things, you just got to seek it out. And if you're a real estate investor, I'm challenging you to get out of debt. Um, you know, when the market goes down and people are saying, I hate real estate, that's when you should buy. People mm -hmm. say, oh, I love real estate. Real estate's great. That's when you should sell and get out of debt. So it's um, not, two things you said I think is very good uh, just for people to understand is that it takes a strong man to build on the biblical foundation. But that's the better foundation. You can't be weak. It's it's easier to build on the sand. You said that. That's very. I love that. Yeah. Secondly, debt. Um, now, I would say more frivolous debt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you buy, if you time the market right, and you buy low and have um, reasonable debt at the bottom of the market, and then you write it up, and then you liquidate some things. Now, maybe not everything, but you, and then you pay down your debt at the top of the market. Yeah. You're going to be a genius, you know. <laughs> but if, if you buy at the top of the market and get tons of debt, and then you go down, you're going to lose it all. Yeah, so. Sure.
<laughs> be wise. Be wise. The, I pray for the Issachar anointing. The Bible says that the men of Issachar who knew what to do and, and when to do it. So I, mm. God, I was buying uh, 45 homes a year um, and flipping them. And I haven't bought a house in like four years. So that might change I, with this new administration. Yeah. Well, I don't, you know, when people are saying I hate real estate, that's when I'm going to be buying. So help <laughs> me God. You want, you want to walk with people who have some scars, who have seen some market cycles and yes. have, have a mentor. Don't, don't try to learn it all yourself. It's yeah. better to learn from other people. Yeah. Yeah, and the wisdom cries out in Proverbs chapter 1. Wisdom cries out, but if you don't listen to it, if you're not humble, if you don't get mentors, mm -hmm. then when you are in your prideful way and you get crushed and destroyed and you're suicidal, um, God will let you bounce on the bottom for a long time. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He there. will. He'll let you bounce on the bottom. So how about walk in humility and uh, diversify and don't go into debt on frivolous things and buy low and sell high. How about you do that? And then you won't have to bounce on the bottom. I bounced on the bottom till um, January of 2008 until February 14th of 2009 and on February 14th, 2009, I, I turned a hundred and ten thousand dollars into a million. So I got one of the best foreclosure deals in the history of Northern Nevada love at it. the courthouse steps in Earrington, Nevada on February 14th. So I love it. Finwood LLC. So praise God. The Lord, <laughs> but the Lord let me bounce on the bottom right. for a long time. And it, it was painful. Like you said, you got scars, and we all we've all got them somewhere. <laughs> well, I had a pastor tell me when you go to battle with someone, he goes to war. I he goes, I don't want to go to war with someone who doesn't have any scars, right? You know. But then he goes on the same note. I don't want to go to battle with a guy who's got too many scars too. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we learn from our our scars and. So I have uh, number two was. Uh... What's that like being in Sports Power International work with Bill, Bill Allickson? Well, it's amazing. Bill is the greatest um, man of faith that I've ever met. Um, he he just believes God and, you know, that verse, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you as well. Bill mm -hmm. lives that out. He's a soul winner. I yes. remember once we were, we played, I think in Columbia and he was, sharing his testimony and the scorekeeper was going uh, uh, ringing the bell like let's get the second half started and bill was in front of six thousand people and battling with this guy and he uh he shared the gospel he fought through it to to share the love of jesus it was amazing the buzzer yep <laughs> amazing well you guys did this is the poster and yeah. you played the Kentucky greats. We had Jack Gibbons, Dickie Beal, uh, Roger Harden, Troy McKinley. And you guys, that's, I stayed, I could not believe I still had that. And I think your autograph uh, is right, right there on the right. NBA Philippians 413. That's you. Amen. Okay. You went to Ukraine in 2013. Yeah, I went to Ukraine and we met with the president and um, yep. So what was he like? He was cool. Yeah. He actually he actually scared uh, Anthony Bonner because and Anthony Bonner's watched a lot of those uh KGB movies and stuff. And so <laughs> he was asking he knew like how many how are your four kids, David? Yeah. And uh he asked Anthony a real personal question, or he asked Anthony a real personal question that was like he shouldn't have known that information. So <laughs> Anthony was telling us, don't talk on the phones in the hotel. They're bugged. They know what we're doing. <laughs> it was fun. It was funny. I, he, he legitimately, he's a smart guy, but he legitimately was, he got, the president got into his head a little bit by knowing personal information about him. <laughs> <laughs> and he called me about a week ago. I'm going to have to get back to him. When I do, I'm going to ask him about that. 
But yeah, um, anyway, I won't keep you much longer, Dave. I'm grateful. I was looking to see. I think you played. You played at you, least you 80 games with under Rock. So uh, on January 20th, you a bench January 20th, you played. the inauguration. Yeah, I started of, yeah. 13 yeah. games, Trump played all 82 term. games. I went to Washington okay. D.C. Uh, Our coach called Don Cheney got who, NBA coach of the year. I, so I was, was praying for America, year, but the Holy Spirit yeah. told me to go. I guess the final yeah. question: How in the world you jump from team to team to team successfully like that? Jesus and keep going. I appeal to heaven. I got a Bible says that man makes his plans, but the Lord determines his steps. Okay, walking with God is not about Everything, controlling so everything they took pictures of me. I told him, former NBA player, praying, praying Lord, for you have your way in my life. Praying Give me for fair elections. Manage and, yeah. um, uh, and the Bible says he will keep uh, in perfect I got peace. interviewed and talked about Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ loving him. So our country our eyes on Jesus. Loving you and loving me. And so faith. Yeah. And it was pretty cool. Bumped around. But yeah, yeah, if you Google me now or Wikipedia or whatever, that's all they on Jesus, We can have peace. It comes up. We can know yeah, it's going to work out. We take our eyes on more Jesus. Look at the storm. We'll be like and Peter and sunk in the so. Mediterranean Sea. <laughs> right, right. So keep your eyes on Jesus to you. I pour blessings over you and everyone listening. Jesus loves you. We love you. Have faith in God. Get up. Put your big boy or big girl pants on and just go to work for God. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. And then just connect with people and spur them on towards love and good deeds. All right. We got final question. This will be quick. We yep. get two, we get a thousand to two thousand views a day on on the videos. How yeah. can the viewers pray for you, Dave? I would covet the prayers for me and for our country that we would tune in to the Holy Spirit, that we would literally pray the Lord's Prayer, that Thy kingdom come and Thy will be done. I I would covet their prayers for me and for themselves that we can figure out the mountains of influence that we're supposed to be on and we could work to bring God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. Um, but uh, thank you for taking the time All right. to be with us. And uh, I hope today somebody sees you and is inspired by your boldness, because that's the one thing about you that speaks to me personally is your boldness for Christ is legendary. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. I'm going to blow the horn one more time and then okay. you can sign up. Praise the Lord. And the praise walls the are Lord. coming down. See you later. <laughs> God bless you guys. See you, see you Dave. God bless you, brother. Bye. But hope you enjoyed the video today um, and hope that somehow you can be inspired to continue to stand strong for Jesus Christ. And uh, again, a big thank you to David Wood. If you're in Reno, Nevada, look him up at Hout Realty and uh, buy a house. If you're looking for one, he's the guy to talk to. Um, so I hope everybody enjoyed this. And uh, subscribe and like if you can to help us to continue to get more interviews. We do have several more coming up. And uh, we're going to try to do the best we can. 